So I've started the recording. This is our Design 350 lab. It's Wednesday the 6th. Uh, it's an on-campus lab, but this one is fully online today because we're doing a doing a, a demo on the simulation. So let's see what we've got up and what we should be going over. Um, on Monday, I did the um, theatolite exercises where we read the survey stuff that was from the um, from the resource file. So today we're going to do the points survey and I'll do I think I've got site number one. I don't really remember which one I pulled up but I'm going to do that. We'll record an XYZ coordinate, export the points to Revit, and create a property line drawing and we've done this in the past and we may have even done this site already but it doesn't hurt to get a little extra practice so here we go I've got the site and so I'll click here and as I look around I see this one has a building pad it's got some rods already in place for you I'm so nice that I put uh, the we rods can't in. we can't see anything oh. Well, that would be good then if I were to share the screen. That would be good. That's what happens when I get popped out and come back in and pop out and come back in. There we go. Is it stabilized for you now? Yes, I can see it. Thank you. Okay. So here we go. So I've got the site. It's got a building pad. It has some uh, rods already for you so I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna walk up to each one of those and get the readings and then I do want to get the building pad so here I've got and as you know it doesn't matter what order you go in so I'm just writing them down on a piece of paper I think it's easier that way point five one and eight point two nine and I can go over to my next one. So this won't take too long. The reason that that wall is there is um, uh, you actually do fall off <laughs> of this the way we have the game designed. So now I'm at 100.92 minus 113.49. Almost a straight north-south line there, right? And 14.18. One hundred point nine four, so I went directly straight in the x direction minus forty point seven three, which is west. Thirteen point two two. Actually, my my west stayed where it was. And come over to this one, and I'm gonna make sure I'm recording. Go. I got admit there that's good that time I clicked the right button I am recording so that's good so now I'm at a minus 0.59 minus 1.29 and 13.20 and hello professor hi there are you able to see what's going on okay yes sir 62.05 I'm just doing a demo 12.18 and I was pretty sloppy with how I wrote down that last one but I'll go back and get it there we go my mouse got all whacked out here hold on a sec there we go. And I got a minus. Okay, so that's back to my original point. Okay, so there's my original point. There's this one. I'm just going to double check some of my numbers. Yep, that one's right.
this is one of the problems sometimes. My mouse isn't catching enough. It needs to sort of re-release. There it goes. I, the, I need a reset on my mouse. To uh, when, I, when I went over to my other screen, it kind of bonked me. <laughs> so I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this one and come back into it. It doesn't matter. The, the, they're all in the same spot. Let's see if it's that's really the nice. same. Let's see if that's the same one. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I've got those. So now my last thing to do is come over here. I'll push the control down and I'll put a rod on each corner. And I'm going to note these on my piece of paper that it's on my pad. Um, 28.17 minus 70.16 and 13.70. Now, the other one is a little bit more complicated than that. Minus 30.96 minus 69.89 and 13.70. Minus 31.29. And this isn't the most precise we can get because, of course, 13.70. At least it's a nice flat pad. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. Because I don't, have, I don't have ultimate control over where I put this. That one came out really good, right? 28.13, but you can see it's 0.04 different than the other one. as probably supposed to be 4.74 and 13.70. So there, I've got my I've got my data. I can I can just kind of cruise along and do stuff. Bonk. There I go. Oh, I can't get up. I don't know if there's a jump. Probably have to go around to a different so That might be a little problem with that other one. But I can definitely get up there if you want to get up on top. Okay. So there we go. I've got that. So now I need to type in my field notes. Gosh, this thing. Come on. They tell me that it doesn't blank out on me for it at, at every half hour increments. I see it's more like five minutes. <laughs> so this is going to be, I better make sure I know which one it is. Site one, later, week seven. What was my weather like? Clear, 76 degrees. How does that sound? This is my simulator, and my description and notes is a boundary and building pad. You don't have to do all that, but it's okay. Okay, and so we know that I don't need any of this because I'm just collecting my X, Y, Z points, so I can just type them in. And so this is just trying to do point five nine. That was probably supposed to be pretty close to zero, zero. For the project. OK, 
Okay, now I've got my building pad, so I'm going to skip a line. And you'll find that the next one to do has a lot more building pad stuff. And my last point that I collected, I'll tell you, this is by far um, easier than going out and doing it. And so this is why some people like drone scans and everything, because you get everything off of this. So there we go. There's my copy of my field notes, and I'll probably, um, let me do this, let me do... Sometimes I don't know where it is, so I'll, I'll actually just download it and then load it back up. I'll put it into my work. Sometimes that's easier when you do these make a copy things. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to get it from there than trying to find out where it was and move it. And so now I can rename this one. This is Survey Field Notes, Site 1. Of week 7. So I've got it. I've got my, my notes. I can still keep working off of this one, though. All right, so now... I need to put this into some sort of format that that we can use as a points file. Okay? And so the easiest way to do that is to copy this, control C, and then I'm going to make a new file. And this is going to be my Revit export data for site 1 because I need it in the right format and I'm going to paste my values only and it comes out all tweaky weird so I can I can move things those are my X's these are my Y's and these are my Z's so I always have to play around with the data. And I don't want this spare row. It's going to look funny if I do. So that's the data that I'm going to want. So I need to export that as a CSV. Download, comma, separated values, CSV. That's what um, Revit reads. So I'm going to download it as a CSV. And so I've got it now. And of course, the thing I have to do is save it. Cool. I've got it. Of course, then when I get into Revit, we remember that we do a new, and I'm going to do architectural just because it's easier to work with, and it's a project. And I'm going to go to my site plan, and I'm going to make a copy of that because I'm going to make a boundary one. So I'm going to duplicate that. I usually leave my site plan alone so that it's like everything's on there. It's all nice looking. And I'll rename this as my um, this is where I'm going to do my property. Get 
my property lines. Now from here, one inch equals 20 feet, and I see my numbers are in the hundreds or so. So one inch equals 20 feet. That'll only be about five inch, so I can even make it probably one inch equals 10 feet. And, it, and it'll look pretty good when I put it in here. That means uh, uh, my property will be about 10 inches long. So if I put it on a 11 by 17, it'll probably work okay. So then remember that we go to massing and site. And we make a topo surface. And I'm going to create it from an import. And I'm going to specify the points file. Hopefully I can find it. 350, week 7. Uh-oh. Why did that not go in as a CSV somewhere? Thought I did it as a CSV. Oh, I put it in 301. That's why. Well, that's the wrong place to put it. Let me do that again. <laughs> that was really... I wanted to put it in 350. Week 7. There we go. I'll bet you it'll work this time. There it is. Revit export data for site one, sheet one, CSV. Good. And I am in feet. Wow, that looks an awful lot like, looks an awful lot like that um, upside down flipped of what we've been drawing. Isn't that cool? So I think I'm going to click OK. Now, one thing I could do is from this topo surface one. Uh, oops. Sorry. If I click on that and edit the surface, it might be interesting for me to know where those things are. Okay, and I might have to do it from my dimensions. But that is the topo surface. And so if I want to look at it here now as a 3D, looks looks pretty good. I think I'm I think I'm doing pretty good with that. So I have let me a come question. back. What's that? I have a question. So uh what tool would you use to get the uh the coordinates in real life would you use like a GPS with a, like a built in altimeter or yes. How would that work? Yes. That's exactly what they do or a drone or something like that. But yeah, they, they basically, they have GPS sticks and it's usually like four or five feet. It's like walking around with the rod, but yeah. on the top of the rod, you have a GPS receiver basically and, it, okay. and, and you just get it um that's the most common way however you can get this directly from a drone also because drones so, will export this csv data oh wow that's pretty sweet so or like you, it can take like lidar data or just yes go over go over spots yep Okay, that's yep. sweet. And that's the other thing is sometimes they do it with a total station that's set for its XYZ from your total station. So instead Ooh. of using our theodolite, they have something, a specific type of total station that basically lasers back and forth to a little reflector on the rod. Mm -hmm. And it gives you XYZ to from your spot and then you can also do that whole back site thing and everything when you put it on there then it'll give you xyz based on that because internally it's got the computing power 
Sweet. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, there's a if you really want to to get into this and know a little bit, um, you can you can check out Cal Drafting and Supply just around the corner from the college. They are the local big dogs, and okay. and I mean, they have people from all over the state and the country actually that that you know use them because <laughs> they're really good. Yeah, bet. Cool. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oop. I'm gonna highlight that, hide and view that category. I don't need this either, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my project zero go away for right now. So there we go, and I've got it. Now I might look at my data and look and see that I see from 28 feet over to uh, let's see minus 31 well no I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run like this right now that that'll be good um, so now I need to make this look like property lines. So I have to set my graphics for this element as half tone. And if I want it even lighter still, I think I can set my foreground even uh, surface transparency even a little bit higher. No, nope, that's still hitting those. Let me see. I'm not positive on all the little things I need to foreground. Let's see what happens if I do that one. Okay, well that's 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 okay for I I can go in and get those little topos to look a little lighter. But I think that that'll be okay for right now. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to annotate my detail lines going around. And I, I'm going to want to have those as probably center lines would be the best ones. And then I'll just kind of draw those in. And we'll get as close as we can on it. I hate it when it does that. You might be able to use click control to disconnect the lines. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We can do that in AutoCAD and disconnect snapping. There, it snaps off. <laughs> Had to find snaps off. I don't know where everything is on on here so well. Yeah, I'm quite rusty with this program. And then, of course, I can get back to there. And then I can... Um, override the graphics by that category and I can darken it up a little bit and I can give it more weight. I usually do like an 8 or a 9. That's a little too much. That looks pretty good. There. So there I've got it. If I need to I can hide that element and I have my properties and the thing is I can't put spot elevations in unless those properties are there so I either have to make my spot elevations 
off of um, text, which I prefer not to do, or I need to have my topography showing. So that's why I usually have the topography showing, and then I just try to make it very light. Okay, but now, of course, I can put my spot elevations on the corner. And just get as close as you can. This doesn't snap in on some of these as well as some of the ones. And I think my scale might be off a little bit because these should show a little bit better. So I'll put it on a piece of paper in a moment to see how it looks. So there we go. All right, so we've got the basics of it. There's still a little more work to do, but let's get the scale right. So I'm going to add a sheet, which you can do from view, add a sheet, or just right click on the sheets, new sheet. I need an 11 by 17. I think it will be best. And so the title blocks are way down at the bottom. 11 by 17. And let's just see what that looks like on there. So, 1 inch equals 20 would have been better. So, there we go. I've got the... I've got the basics of it right now. I need to get my property line tags on there. So that's an annotate tag by category. Let's try that again. Should be tag by category. I don't know why that's not letting me pick on those to tag by category. That's interesting that it, oh, I didn't make it a property line. I used center lines. Silly me. Take that back. I did that wrong. Those are massing and sites property lines. Shame on me. We all make mistakes. I've made there we go. tons of mistakes in Revit. There we go. That's a little bit better. And now I'll do my override the graphics. Again, um, projection lines. I have to set it for darker. And I have to get my line weight probably at 7 or 8. That looks pretty good. That looks a lot better. Let's see how it looks on the sheet. Yep, looks fine on the sheet. So let's go back. Now I can do a property tag. And, oh, tag by category. Oh, much better. 
There is no tag loaded, so let me do that. Those are under annotations. So I'm going to go into here and look for my annotations. And it's probably civil property line tag. Length and direction. So there's all sorts of different ones I can use, but I think I'll just use these ones. And it puts it on in whatever direction it wants. Not very good. They're a little bit weak on that. The other thing I want to do is highlight them all. So I'm holding the control key down to highlight them all. And I'm going to get rid of the leader line. That way I can bring it a little bit closer. Get it lined up a little bit better. Look, this isn't bad. Isn't that how it really is? Like zero degree in in our in our book? Those it is. Actually pretty good. Uh, not bad, huh? Oh, yeah. Not bad at all. So pretty close. Pretty close. Um, I'm not sure that we put the model in exactly the same. I think we made the model and scaled it and then brought it back. But you should have something sort of like this, right? Yeah. Now, remember that we do want to know, you know, the street and the... Uh, how come I'm not seeing the property lines? The tags. That's interesting. Property lines. There they are. I need to click on it to reload it. Um, so this is looking okay. Remember, there are some things that we're supposed to do that we always try to do. Now, this will hold its north and all of that kind of stuff, but it's still nice to put... And look, that's not very clean, so I might have to do a little bit... I might have to do a little bit of playing around to get this nice. So I see that on all of them. So it's just a matter of really taking some care and doing the best that you can to get it to really look pretty good. I have a question. Yeah. Can you export this as a DWG? Yes. Is it possible? Okay. Yes, it is. Cool. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, that's uh, really nice. So, so here we go. And let's see. So how are we looking over here? That looking good. I'm going to move it over a little bit. Because remember, we want some information about this. So one piece of information is we want the area. So that's going to come from Analyze. And uh, there should be some schedules that I can do. Schedules and quantities. And I'm going to do a, um, probably the topo. There it is. I'll do a topo schedule. Let's see what comes up in here. I've got, hopefully... Surface area or projected area. Mostly for these planning purposes, we want projected area. Okay. And um, that's, that's the main one that we want. So I can, I can do that. I don't need to filter. I don't need to sort. Formatting. That'll be okay. Probably left is all good. And appearance, we usually get rid of the blank row and put it in. So there we go. And 
we find those down in our schedules and quantities. Let's put it in here. And if I want other information out of this, I can. So I probably need to go back and make that um, make that centered, right? So let's go back in there and um, hit the formatting for that. Center it up. And that way, if we put a building pad on, that would be another topography. And that would be good. Okay. Um, let me see. So there's the topography schedule. Let's see if there's a schedule I can get from property lines. I think there are property line schedules. No, they're not under there. Let's see. Where are my site? They're under site. That's where it is. Property lines or property line segments. So we'll go with the property line segments. And probably we want distance and I think bearing. Let's just see what happens when we do distance and bearing. See what we get from that. Yeah, there we go. And so now I can do my fields. Those look okay. Filters okay. Sorting. Probably want to try getting a grand total. Let's see what that tells me. These are probably both going to be centered. And again, we get rid of the blank row. Let's just see what it looks like. No, it just tells me how many property lines. doesn't give me my total perimeter. Probably have to do a calculation on that. Uh, but this will be good enough for what we want. So let's go ahead and come back here and put the property schedule in. Make it kind of look nice so it matches up with the other one. So I got five property lines. There should be a way to add those up. I'll have to look that up to get that. Okay, so there we go. That is, and this would be site number one. Three fifty. Can even put week seven. And you can put your name on there. So that's pretty much what we're looking for. So it's not, not too bad. Okay. Um, let me think if there's anything else I want to put on here. Um, no, because there's, I don't think I've got draw line while I'm in this mode. I'm trying to think if I want to draw the pad in there on this one. We've got the data. I think we'll put the pad in on the next one. Because I didn't put a pad in on the other ones, I don't think. So let's go ahead and just go with this one. Now you will see from site number two, 
So one of the things that you can do is you can, this one you have to put them in. If you want to show how that works, you'll take a point there. Let me see if I can get to a better spot. Oop, I think I got stuck in here now. I'll have to come back out. And you take a point there. So, so that, when you put those two points into Revit, I don't think I can get out of this. Eh, bonk. I don't think I have a jump on this one like I do on the other ones. Oh, I got stuck in here. Um, so, you're going to have to make sure you don't fall in here. You'll have to, um, yeah... You have to get out and put it back in again. Um, I thought we had a jump on here, but now I think that was in a different one. That's in our walkthroughs and not in this one. Um, but that's okay. You can you can actually go all the way around, and then you can come inside. You can come back, right, because they're in the same place every time. But this idea of getting... Um, one here and then one down below. It actually will show that as a pit in Revit. Okay, so if as an example I wanted to come back over to here and get some additional points, I could get a point right there. No, that one's still showing me my 13.7. I'd have to come back and take those other ones out and then put these ones in, and it would show me, it would, it would actually, Revit would make a line and then right next to it another line. So that might be a cool thing. Let me, let me go ahead and do that just to see what that's like. So if I put one on the ground right next to it, so now I've got not my pad, but the level around it. 28.95 minus 34.51 and 18.41. So that's at 13.41. That's at 12.53. Ten point two seven and eleven point four seven. So if I were to add those points into here, I could I could do it. So this one's going to be my high point. I could place a point at an elevation of 13.41 right next to it, and then 12 point, no, that was the wrong one. Over here is where it was. So place point kind of like right next to it 
And then over here, place a point is where we get to type it in. And then here would be an 11.4, 11.47. And over here at 10.27. So you see how it kind of helps identify the building pad of, of what's going on there. So it actually re-topologized -top it to show what that looks like. So you don't have to do that, but if you feel like it, you can. Okay, and then if you want to, you can put a building pad in. That's at 13.5. Seven O. So there you go. Now you've got a building pad. So when you look at it in 3D, you actually see it. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, isn't that nice? Okay, and when you come back over to here... You see... You see the total area, and then you see the, the projected area of your topography, and now you've got your building pad, too. That's kind of cool, huh? Oh, yeah. So if, you, if you'd like to do that, that would be a good thing. That would be a cool thing to do. Um, not totally necessary, but good. If you do do that, and you want to get some extra stuff in here this is all just extra good stuff that you can do you can do some should be able to get over to this and I'll go off of this point up here it's kind all of right. reminds me of this new overpass that's being built uh, near Natomas yeah near the airport. So when I was driving next to, it, I noticed that it was very defined and you can actually see where they put down points in the modeling software. It's actually really interesting. Right. Yeah. How, how <laughs> accurate like, it was. Yeah. It is pretty cool, huh? Yeah. It's like, wow, I actually know where they placed the lines and stuff like that. And it's like really cool. And so another thing you can do here is in the dim style, you can set the precision units format, feet and fractional inches. Maybe we don't need it to the nearest 32nd. Maybe we want it to the nearest eighth or something like that. So kind of cool. There's there are things that you can do here. You can right. So you can start building this up to do more as you look at it. But for sure, we want the property lines, the elevations. Um, we want the, the tags and we want these two things. And then if you can figure out how to put your building pad in, that's all the more cool. It works, um, works pretty neat. Okay. Any questions? That is 
what you'll do for the two um, the two sites on the simulation. Okay, I'll go ahead and turn off the recording.